Hi, good evening and welcome to Tuesday Talk. Tonight we are just going solo on YouTube. So um, no Facebook tonight. I only have one device tonight. So um, that's what we'll be doing. And also doing a little experimenting with internet. Uh, we have a new internet provider. So um, I've noticed when we're streaming on both that it's a little grainy. So um, obviously my YouTube family is my priority. So I'm going to um, go on here and I've directed the Facebook folks to come on over. So if you come on, say hi and let me know what's going on, where you're from, and uh, just say hi. So remember last week we upcycled a metal vase and we used molds and we were duping a $600 vase and I did have a really nice compliment from one of our Facebook watchers that said um, that she liked it better than the $600 vase. So that was good enough for me. I'm still considering putting um, a sealer on here, a gloss sealer. So, but I, I do like it. I think it's pretty cool. And I will tell you some of the appliques ran a little bit. Um, so I might touch up in here a little bit. So still, still maybe some work to be done, but you know, either way, I'm not sure whether we'll get 600 or 700 out of it, but <laughs> we'll try. So I had another vase just like it. And my friend Juan had given me them. I'm gonna put the screen down just a tad. I should do that with my left hand because if I do it with my left hand, you never see it. Ha, huh. okay. Um, so this vase, I did a little pre-work. I, I forget when it's here, it echoes. <laughs> but I did um, a little work on it already. So you'll notice there's this. Now last week we did prime this one. We used slick stick because of the metal being a little bit shiny. We used that bonding primer called Slick Stick. So uh, what we're gonna do with this, I rolled out a piece of clay. So this is Iron Orchid Designs air dry clay. And I took a hunk of it and I rolled it out with the rolling pin, okay? And I wanted a smooth surface because this has sort of ribs in it. So I wanted a smooth surface to put a transfer on. So we're going to be using this Le Jardin transfer. So um, I thought that meant flowers, but it means garden, the garden. So either way, it uh, has to do with floral, but this is the pack that this comes from. So Iron Orchid design transfers are pretty cool because they come in a book. And it's a lot easier to keep the designs flat and manage them. So there's two sheets that are black and white. And some really cool, like French, French country design. We're going to be doing some pots and um, pots and jars in a class soon using these and some other things. This one you can't see because it's white. So if you put it on a colored planter, um, then you'll see those designs. You can see on the back, I'm gonna show you what everything looks like. And then I cut one out, our Le Jardin um, transfer out of this one. These are blue. So I think that's really pretty. So on the back, it shows you the different pages. So um, this is the one that's white. So if you put it on a colored planner, then you're gonna get um, the, your design in white. So let's go ahead and get started. So what I'd like to do, I'm gonna use a, a couple molds and make some, um, an area kind of around here to kind of frame it and then we'll put we'll paint it and we'll put our transfer on last so I'm gonna put the screen down a little bit so you can see what I'm doing and again this this should be dry and smooth enough enough for our transfer but I'm gonna 
wait until the end for that. But part of me thinks I should do it now because <laughs> if we do it later, then I might have trouble getting in there. So let's go for it. Um, the Another thing that's really nice about these uh, transfers is that they have this grid design on them so you can easily make your design level. Now I just, just grabbed the stick, the transfer stick, and I don't see it. <laughs> so that's cool. All right, we'll set that aside. We'll come back to it. Oh, first rain. You like the shape of that vase? Oh, cool. Yeah, did um, I'll show you the one I just showed, just showed everybody. We did this one last week, and it was to dupe a six hundred dollar uh, Capitamonte vase. So uh, this week we're doing something a little, little more simple. So thank you for joining and saying hi. So. Like I said, can't find my transfer stick, but I do happen to see <laughs> a fork from takeout. <laughs> so that's going to be our substitute. Now I am still going to be really gentle with um, the application of this because um, I don't, I think I probably could easily, you know, mark it. <laughs> I don't think it's set that well. It's been uh, painted and rolled out and painted. Okay, so. I'm going to kind of line this up with the lines in the vase. So hopefully we've got it centered. I'm going to come over here a little bit more. Okay, so I have that laid on here. And I'm just going to rub kind of gently, but using the handle of my fork from take. <laughs> See, when you do your... Uh, your lives at your dining room table, you never know what you're going to find. We were talking about um, being neat and orderly today. And I said, well, you could come into my kitchen and, you know, everything's ready to go there. But the dining room, you know, it gets cleaned up for holidays, but it, most of the time it looks like a studio. <laughs> so, but it is what it is. Okay, I really do wish I had my applicator, but we'll get this started. Ah, yeah, there it goes. It's coming off. Okay, so again, this, um, this design is blue. So when we add some details to the molds that we're going to add here, we're going to use blue uh, dry brushing to highlight those details. So I am super excited about um, some of the collaborations and uh, challenges that are going on. Um, since you're on First Rain, I'm excited about the um, Unique Antique Challenge. And also, I'm excited about the Makers Challenge as well. So that is pretty cool. And... I'm going to have a busy week getting my projects done. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, I love the graphic so much for the Unique Antique. I'm going to be posting it, but it's sort of been an inspiration to me. So, I'll leave that. <laughs> oh, the Maker's Challenge is put on by Do It Yourself Magazine. And um, Christina Muscari from Pretty Distressed uh, and Walesa from A Life Refurbished is uh, one of the judges because she won a previous challenge. But this time the theme is called Make It Shine. So um, you, and there's another uh, refurbished challenge too. So you could do either or both, but um, the Make It Shine is to either use metallic or a high gloss finish on your piece. So I've been working on that one for quite a while. So 
I'm excited to unveil that one too. So there'll be videos on both of those. Okay, this is coming off slowly but surely, but look how pretty it is. Um, the Maker's Challenge, if you just follow Maker's Challenge on Instagram, they always post. And then um, you just follow the link in their My Story whenever they release a new challenge. And then... Um, it sends you an email, you register for the challenge, and it sends you an email, and you just follow the instructions from there. This is the first time I've done it. I have wanted to do it before. But, you know, sometimes that little voice inside your head says, ah, you won't win. <laughs> and I'm finally just uh, feeling it. So, <laughs> okay, I think I've got it all. Just a teeny tiny little speck here. And then we're going to have the um, Ugly Duckling Challenge then too in September. Okay, I'm really happy with the way this turned out. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, so I like the way that turned out. So let's set that aside for a minute and make a few molds and let's get fancy here. So I have um, some clay here. I might need to open another one, but um, you know, keep that clay in a plastic bag so it doesn't get dried up and kind of a best practice here to use cornstarch. Now I'm going to use these two molds and you're going to be seeing these molds on, on these upcoming projects too, <laughs> or at least one of them. Um, but I'm going to use these two to kind of put a little flourish at the bottom. And then I thought we'd use the roses um, to uh, further accentuate it since it's about the garden. Hmm, I am really warm. The um have the air conditioner off because of the noise. <laughs> so I'm kind of feeling it right now. It's been a really good day, it's, but it's been a long day. So today's one of those days when you know I'm kind of glad to get the contacts out and the jammies on. <laughs> okay, so. Just taking a hunk here and working it. I've been doing a lot of molds in the last while back with my um, with the two-part epoxy. And so working with clay is fun. I probably have way too much in here, but I love the consistency of this clay because it's just so malleable. It's really super easy. And I am a stockist for IOD, and I'm super excited because, wait, today's the 23rd. Tomorrow is the release date for um, new products. So I'm still kind of getting my feet wet, so I can't buy them all at once, but I'm excited to release some of them. And we've been doing some classes, so I sure love IOD products. <laughs> I just think the designs are just so, so good. Okay, and we can go ahead and work on this other one here. See if we have enough clay for this. Nope, we need a little bit more. Can you hear that helicopter? You've never tried IOD. Oh my gosh, they um it's it's kind of addictive. It's I really especially love the paint inlays. 
As a matter of fact, you're going to be seeing some paint inlays on my Unique Antique Challenge. Um, they're so cool. <laughs> I've done a few on uh, the YouTube channel before, <laughs> um, but yeah, they're, uh, uh, my favorite one is the chintz design, the, the little floral. Can you tell I have a thing for florals? <laughs> I'm definitely a, a floral pattern lover. So I think that's part of the reason why I love their design so much. Okay, so just turn this over and these should flip right out and they are beautiful you can't see it yet <laughs> there we go all right another floral lover huh <laughs> okay all right so these are really pretty and we're gonna get some glue on them and we're gonna position these get them out of the way for a second but my thought on this was to do kind of hmm I kind of wanted it to hug the bottom of this hmm. <laughs> is that the one I wanted yeah hmm they seem so much bigger right now I don't know whether I'm stretching them or not. Maybe I'll use this on the top. Of course, I don't want it to cover up my letters either. If I use these on the top, then I can use some of the flowers down below. Okay. Sometimes it's hard for me to show you on the screen and work at the same time, so... I'm going to pull it towards me, but um, I'll get this in a position so you can see me putting the glue on. I am using tight bond uh, wood glue to apply these. I'm going to get this out of the way a second. These vases are kind of big. And I want to make sure that I have enough glue on here that if you get it, to the edges, then it really won't shift on you too much. So I'm going to keep it laying flat, but um, if you get a good bond to the edges, then usually it'll stay. Type on thick and quick is my favorite, but right now this is what I have. I also use Aileen's Tacky Glue sometimes to apply these, but that doesn't really um, stay in place for larger molds when you stand it upright. You really have to watch that they don't shift. So you, you definitely want to get your glue clear to the edges of your molds. Okay, now I'm going to make a little room here and get my vase back in, in the picture. Okay, wipe this up. Oh, <laughs> I, I went to pick up my paper towel and it's glued to the, to my surface, so. I'll grab another one here and um, sometimes I use use props here to keep my uh, keep the piece upright I was using a jar of paint earlier you know what let me I'm gonna put this down on this end I don't know if that's gonna work any better or not but <laughs> Okay, so I want to find the center approximately. I know you guys can't see this yet, but I will definitely roll it over so you can. 
I just want to get these in position. And we will say our prayers that it doesn't shift. <laughs> I'm going to wipe off the excess glue here because I think that kind of critical in keeping it from shifting because I think once it has that um, has that glue there it'll kind of like ride <laughs> ride it in in a downward shift if that makes any sense I'm just making things up now no but you know what I mean if there's a pull of glue it's more likely to kind of travel along it. So we'll just remove that. <laughs> and that way, if it kind of sets up quickly, then hopefully that'll keep it in. Okay, good. I'm glad. <laughs> I'm glad you got that. Okay. All right. Let's get this other side on. So here's what we've got so far. been a while I've done that split screen before so I have the overhead I should do that again okay well this went on pretty nice knock wood I shouldn't say that yet okay and again I want to get this excess here I had kind of thought these would end up farther away from each other, and I was thinking that I would put another little flower in the middle, and I may end up doing that. I might just overlap that. This glue is so yellow. <laughs> I just I just want to get it get it off of here. All right, so that's what we've got so far. I'm gonna take a look at it here. So the the piece of clay that I rolled out wasn't necessarily symmetrical when we started, so, um, sorry, I just have to do this so that I see it and it's straight, but I need to wipe off a little more glue. Okay, so I'm going to set this up. Well, I guess that's all you're going to see if I do that. I'll set it aside. I'm going to make a few more molds and We're going to hope this doesn't shift in the meantime. I'm going to pull back a little more glue. We'll just keep looking at it here so it doesn't, uh, doesn't start separating. It's on there pretty good, but okay, let's get some roses out. I think that the, the two of these um, would be pretty to go kind of up the sides. So let's put the cornstarch in. And I think this is totally the secret of secret of working with the clay. And also the micro rim that's on the IOD, that's really helpful too. That's a patented feature of the IOD molds. And they also have, if you're using two-part epoxy, they have um, the measurements on there for uh, the liquid. So, This clay squished in here. Now I wish this was symmetric because that's that's what makes it nice when you have a design and you want to go on either side of it. 
a lot of the designs they have are and that's really cool because then you can put those back to back as well especially if you're using the two-part epoxy if you put them together when they're still kind of wet they'll just stick to each other and you don't need any glue or anything that's helpful for ornaments and stuff so we're going to be making a lot of a lot of ornaments and stuff like that coming up I just love all the detail. All right, let's see how this comes out. When I have ones that are have little things like the stem of the rose, I really feel like that's when that cornstarch comes in so handy. <laughs> um, have a little, little extra there. And that is connected, so we don't want to separate that. Okay, so let me re reconsider here the design. Tell you what, we'll put these leaves coming up this way and then we'll put a rosebud coming this way. We might not need a whole lot for this because we're going to keep it kind of simple. Um, we're going to paint it in white and then put the detail um, on it in the blue. Okay, and again, this is kind of separating out a little bit. does not want to behave. Maybe if I actually stand it up, it might stay because the um, I had done this piece that I ruled out previously and it had time to dry. So that might keep this from falling. So we're going to try it. We're going to stand it up here a little bit. Meanwhile, I keep wiping glue. The good thing is that glue, you can paint right over. <laughs> I'm getting it all over the place. Just trying to make sure it's symmetric, which I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so let's make, um, we'll make this big rosebud and then we'll try to affix that. See if that'll all stay in place. <laughs> See if I do all this stuff ahead of time, then you know that's no fun. Whoops. Okay, so we're just doing this little rosebud here. Such beautiful detail in these. I hope this is enough for a design. Uh, there we go. There's the detail. Um, I'm just going to flip this guy because it's pretty delicate. Okay. Let's see. Standing that upright worked pretty well. We're going to have a challenge here with the, the roses, but um, reminds me, did you ever see the movie? It's an old movie, The War of the Roses, about the couple that <laughs> is uh, separating and they're fighting about the all the um, things in the house. Oh my gosh. I don't know what made me think of that, but I guess roses, but... <laughs> Crazy movie, if you've never seen it, it's a good one. I'm 
Michael Douglas and I can't say her name, Kathleen somebody. <laughs> Haven't seen it, but you're going to have to go check on it. Yes, definitely. It's an oldie. It's definitely not a new any anytime lately movie, but it's a good one. It's one of those movies I could watch, you know, over and over again. Not that I would seek it out to watch over and over again, but you know how when you're, if you're channel surfing and it comes on, it's like one of those things, oh, gotta stop. <laughs> okay, so let's see how this is going to go. So the, the leaves are delicate, very delicate. I'm just going to set that there so it doesn't want to roll. And very carefully, try to pick up my leaves. Now I have to put it towards me a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's going on pretty nicely. Let's get our rosebud on here, which, hmm. I should have maybe used a smaller one. I kind of like it to go up, so I think I'm going to try to smush it underneath this leaf. This is a lot of layering here, but hopefully it'll all work out. I'll show you what I'm doing here in a second. And I have some glue to wipe. I think I might want one more rosebud on here. All right, so we've got the leaves coming down here, and we've got this little rosebud tucked in here. So I'm thinking one small rosebud may be coming down this way, and then we'll and then we'll call it a day on the rosebuds. I think this is pretty. Um, okay, I'm gonna. I don't want to stand this one up right yet because I just put those on the bottom, so they will definitely want to travel. So I'm gonna put my tape underneath here. Hopefully, we're flat enough. Okay, so let's make another rosebud. I sure do appreciate you guys hopping on here tonight. Um, let's see. I think well, we have that one. We used that one. I like this one. This one's really delicate. We'll use that one. So I always keep a cornstarch with um, a brush in it all the time. I have one at home and one at the shop just for this. It definitely makes it a lot easier. A lot of people shake out the excess, and I don't. I I kind of need it for the when I'm using clay. You don't use it when you're using the two-part epoxy. If you have ever used that, then you know it just um, hardens and then it pops right out. But um, sometimes the clay can be a little bit of a challenge. So that's why using that cornstarch makes it a whole lot easier. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Even that delicate little stem. Look how pretty that is. Okay, let's get some glue on that. As much as I hate to do it, I think I might um, use use the hair dryer and see if I can dry up some of that glue so that we can paint. Um, you know, I always say 
It's best to let things dry naturally, but when you're doing a live, sometimes in order to finish the project, you kind of have to move it along a little bit. So, in the shop I use a heat gun and at home I use a hair dryer. <laughs> Okay, this little stem's all curved, so just kind of push that up there. Okay, let me take a look here. Okay, so it's one more thing that bothers me, and it's this gap right up here. So let me just see. I can make it come together a little bit better or I can put another uh, motif on there one thing I was considering doing in this acanthus mold there's these little flowers like that so I think I'm gonna put that on there or there's a little slightly bigger one there too um, Thinking scale-wise, just this little one, just to cover up that gap. So I don't know if this is a good move or not, but that's what we're <laughs> that's what we're going for. Okay. Yeah, I definitely wish I had my tight one thick and quick tonight. Um, this, this glue is good, but it's just a little thinner. So, thick and quick is just as it implies, thicker and quicker. Okay, I like that. So I'm going to put the camera up a little bit so you can see. Okay, so I want to get rid of that glue. So I'm going to wipe it a little bit and then I'm going to uh, heat it a little bit just to get rid of some of it. So we don't want glue drips. Okay, so pardon me, but we'll make this click. For the glue too. Another thing that heat is doing is setting the the clay just a little bit so that it's going to be a little bit easier for me to paint. All right. Okay, so that glue's sort of set. Let me see if there's any I can get rid of. And sometimes when you paint over glue, it causes a little crackle, um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing either so um so let's see we're going to be using um silk all-in-one mineral paint in salt water so it's a pretty white white whoops <laughs> okay i'm going to stand this up a minute 
And I'm going to put the screen back down. I was, you know, I did put a coat of paint on that clay earlier, so I had used, used the brush already, so I have it in a bag here. Um, let me put the screen down a tad. Okay, so I'm going to work around the, the molds first and kind of have to be a little delicate with it. I want to make sure I get in around the edges. And this will be our telltale sign if it shifts, we'll know. <laughs> Another thing too is this paint has a built-in sealer and a built-in primer. So it kind of gets a little bit of a crust on it too pretty quickly. So I'm hoping that all works in our favor. <laughs> now again, I painted on here where I did the transfer already, so I'm not going to coat that again. I'm just going around and covering up that glue. Like I said, we're going to keep this one kind of simple. Yeah, I mean, it's fancy, no doubt, but we're, we're not going to use a lot of color on it. So tickled I pulled out the transfer that was blue. I didn't even realize there was a blue one in there. <laughs> So there's so many um, of the labels that are French. So I don't know about you guys, but I always have to look them up and see what the writing is, <laughs> what it says. I have to know, <laughs> especially if you have to cut your design. I'm always afraid that someone who speaks French or whatever language the thing is in, if it's cut, they'll, you know, like it'll spell something horrible and they'll be offended. <laughs> So I have to make sure it makes sense. I know I'm a little odd, but. <laughs> All right, so let's get the bottom of this. And try to be smooth. Last flower. Oh, thank you. What is your first name? I'm just like. I don't want to just call you first rain. I know. <laughs> Diana, okay. Well, nice to meet you. And I really do appreciate you hopping on here tonight. Got a couple of viewers at the moment and feel free to say hi. Love having you on here. One of my regulars hasn't been on for a while and I'm hoping she's okay. So Kathleen, if you are watching, hope you're doing well, miss you. Okay, just taking a look to make sure everything's still in place, and it seems to be. Yay! Let me get the top here. We should probably only need one coat just because um, we did use the primer. I 
think we're shifting a little bit here. Yep. Okay, so um, again, I hate to do it, but I'm going to use the hair dryer a little bit and get this dried so that we aren't um, shifting down here because I think drying that glue really helps. So forgive me again for that. Okay, and because it's tucked under the leaves, it wants to take the leaves with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it here a minute, and I'm going to work on um, the, the um, yes, <laughs> what's the word I'm looking for? I'm going to do a little bit of uh, kind of sort of a dry brush, although it's going to be kind of wet, <laughs> um, just to give it a little detail and... Um, and then I may touch it up some more. I know it's kind of working a little backwards and we'd never do it like that any other time. But when we do a live just to get it done, um, that's, that's kind of what happens. So what will happen is I'll put this on, then dry it a little bit more, and then I'll set this um, in a position where it, it won't run. <laughs> so I'm going to take, um, and this is purely because this is what I have here, because I, apparently I didn't grab the right stuff, but I'm going to take Dixie Belle's Mermaid Tail, and I'm just going to use a little bit of water in here. I have a cup of water, and just ever so lightly, just kind of put a little detail on here and then wipe it away. I'm going to use a little more water. So I really just want to do a wash. I'm going to get a new paper towel that doesn't have glue on. There we go. That's what I want to see. Okay, see how that's just ever so lightly um, putting the putting a little color on there. And that's what, just what I want to keep doing on these detail pieces. At first, when you put it on, it looks terrible. But then you keep just kind of watering it down a little bit. And then when you wipe it back, that's when you get... The water makes the... Um, paint go down into the crevices of the molds to give it the detail. So it's kind of like a glaze and it's kind of like watercolor. It's kind of like a wash. <laughs> it's all those things. Okay, the rose is kind of staying on a little better. When I do this, I also kind of like to do a little halo around, around the piece as well. And I'm going to want to do that anyway because of the, the little glue, <laughs> glue halo we have going on.
curious, is the clay still damp? Would we have to be careful when brushing so we won't squish the flowers? Absolutely, yes, you do have to be careful um, because it you can get rid of some of that detail. Um, and the, the clay is somewhat damp, but it does, it like makes a crust, um, especially from me using the dryer. So, um, so yeah, you do want to be careful when it's damp like this, but it's still, you can still paint it surprisingly. And like I said, I kind of push, push the envelope a little bit being live just to get it done so you can see the finished product. But, um, yeah, if you can let it dry naturally and in a good position, that's all the better. Um, another thing, too, is the clay will shrink a little bit. So um, it's always, sometimes it's good to have, like, some people like to paint it first and then, um, then add your molds and then put a second coat on because when it shrinks up a little bit, it makes another little halo around, um, around the mold. So then you have to go in and touch it up. So it might not do that just because of, um, using the, the heat on it, but. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it when someone tells me I'm doing a great job because even, you know, sometimes I kind of get not nervous when I'm doing this, but it's just pressure, you know? <laughs> it's like, it's, sometimes it's like, I mean, you're, you've been with me since the beginning and um, you were watching the whole process, but sometimes people will pop on and just, you know, I think, oh, what are they seeing in that moment? <laughs> it's, it is like a little bit of pressure, but yet I love doing a live. <laughs> I think I need a little more water on that. Oh yeah, I love the way that just stays in the details. And again, I wouldn't have chosen mermaid tail, but that's what I had here. So it's the closest thing to the blue. I had a uh, haint blue, which is totally pale. So that um, wouldn't have really the details like this is, but. And then this um, vase also has these lines in it. So I'll probably also put some of the mermaid tail on that as well, that detail. Okay, I didn't wipe back fast enough. We got a lot of dripping going on, but that's okay. We're getting it. And if it's a little darker than the rest, then just take your water over it again and Okay, I just have to take a look at it here. Okay, I like it, but I'm gonna, oh boy, I just dumped my brush in there. Did You guys saw that, right? <laughs> now I have to dump it in the water and wash it off. Okay, so I'm gonna just kind of do a little really light 
getting some color in these, um, I'll call them veins of the vase. Probably do just a little up at the top. Okay, so here I didn't see we had a run. So I'm just going to kind of do that and hope I can wipe most of it back. And it did pretty good. Boy, running all over the place. But it really doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, have a couple more lines to get here. I keep dumping that brush in my paint, and I don't mean to do that getting too excited, I guess. Okay. So you get the gist. I'm going to put the screen up here. A little bit more. Okay. So what do you think? I think it's pretty. Um, like I said, I need to I need to kind of keep picking at it a little bit here to make sure I don't have a whole bunch of drips and also runs. <laughs> what is that? No drips, runs, or errors, right? Um, but I do I do really like it. So you know you can do whatever you want if you want to use like a wax or whatever. Thank you so much, Diana. I sure do appreciate you guys joining in tonight. And so up here I have a little bit of extra paint. I'm going to take um, the, the wet uh, brush to it and just kind of wash that out a little bit. But yeah, I like it. So I'm going to make sure that I keep it in a position where nothing's going to travel. I might use a little, little bit of tape on there. So, all right. Well, I will see you uh, Saturday. Wait, the the video for the unique antique, what day is that supposed to be up? I'm so confused with my dates. Anyway, it's going to be a two-video week, so uh, I'll make sure I have it on the right date. But um, it, it's either Saturday or Sunday. I my, um, my tutorials usually come up August 31st. What day is that? Is that this weekend? I am not sure. Wait, this is the 23rd. Anyway, I'll make sure it's on up on the right date. But anyway, keep keep watching for those uh, challenge videos. And I really thank you again for joining. Oh, it's a Wednesday. Okay, well, that's that'll work. Okay. All right. Well, listen, take care again. Thanks for joining and have a wonderful night. Bye bye.